it's your girl sin and i am back with another video and if you want to see what i'm doing today stay tuned t-shirt check welcome back print squad t-shirt preneurs big timers old timers and if this is your first time watching my videos welcome first timer Today I'm going to be discussing a topic that has been really popular lately and I've been getting so many questions about this since I started. So if you're interested in finding out what it is, keep watching. Okay, so when it comes to printing DTF designs, like creating a t-shirt using the DTF process, the hardest thing to it is maintaining your printer and it's not super hard to do that as long as you're doing it on a regular basis you know you can't be lazy with the dtf printer you really do have to um you know do the maintenance on it print with the printer on a regular basis but as far as printing all you have to do is print your design out and once it comes out of the printer you go ahead and put the adhesive powder onto the back of the transfer and once you have it powdered up evenly then you have to cure the ink to make sure that it's dry so that it won't peel off of your transfer and the next step will be to go ahead and press it onto the shirt or you can package it up and ship it out if you are going to be selling DTF transfers. I was not even interested in the DTF printing until I actually got some transfers and was able to print a shirt and wash the shirt several times and there was absolutely no change in the shirt from the first day that it was printed and i knew then that dtf was something that i could use for my business now i do offer a whole bunch of other forms of printing i do screen printing i do sublimation i do all over sublimation i do htv I also have in the past done transfers just like the inkjet transfers which wash out after a while and are not as good of quality as the DTF transfers. So my DTF printer is an Epson artesian 1430 it is a converted printer and as you see when you open it up it has six cartridges right there and right here that for the light blue and the light pink it actually has white ink inside right there i turned it the wrong way but y'all can see right there it has white ink inside of those two and this one needs to be refilled that's and that's how we get by with printing out white ink onto our designs all right so in order for me to be able to print i use these inks right here instead of using the factory inks right here these are inks from big boy prints right here this you have white just your regular ink colors the only different color is the white ink as you see right here and this is all of my inks Work, 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 work
forms of printing um, when it comes to like screen printing now if I had a bigger DTF printer and I could print faster and I had like the machine that powders it for you and cures it for you as you come out I feel like it would be equivalent to screen printing as far as how fast you can produce the transfers and press them onto your shirts but because of the setup that i have it does take a little bit of time so i would not be doing big orders with this if i did decide to do some big orders i would only be doing like a photograph or something like that you know something that has to be like a full color image or full color design but as far as just doing a 300 shirt order and stuff like that I would not want to do it with DTF with the setup that I have. Now you can get a better setup, a bigger setup, a setup that prints a lot faster than what I am able to print with my 1430. But as far as the hand, like I know y'all can't feel the hand on here, but it really does feel like screen printing. It feels a lot like, you know, screen printing, you know, so when you when you stretching it right here you know when you pull it and stretch it the design is not stretching it is going to last and one thing i cannot tell you is how long it's going to last but i have wore a shirt and washed it and washed it and washed it and as i have only been it's now february and i've only been doing dtf since like the end of november really december because i didn't really get started until december 
but all the shirts that I have done correctly have lasted. Now, when I first started, I did print a couple of shirts that did not work, but I was using a heat gun to cure it. You do want to have a good way to cure your shirts. That's one of the main things. You can use an oven. The oven is not the most recommended way to do it by some of the big companies, but I do have another way that I'm going to be um, doing it soon and I'm going to be showing you guys. I do have a conveyor dryer and I do have a flash dryer and both of those can cure the shirts but I just have not attempted to do that yet and for the conveyor dryer I would only use that if I'm doing like a lot of transfers. Now with the flash dryer I could do that with a few transfers but I'm still learning. I'm still trying to see if I want to sell the transfers and as far as the printing process with screen printing, I would say that DTF is not for me with my setup as quick as screen printing, but it does feel a lot like screen printing with the hand. It does, you know, if you compare it to, to HTV, the HTV is way thicker. And if you are having to do multiple colors, it would be a long process just trying to make something like this. To make something like this shirt right here, you would have to cut out three different colors of vinyl. And then as you see right here, how close that is lined up, you would either have to layer it or get it real close so that it's not lines in between the design right there. So, you know, that's the thing with that. And the more, like this design right here, if you was weeding it in vinyl, is not that bad to weed because it's a bold design. But like this design right here, it, it is a more detailed design and you would have to like weed the insides of letters. But because it's a big design, it's not as hard to weed with the vinyl either. But, you know, it, it does take extra time just to have to weed stuff like that out when you're using vinyl. And depending on your design, you have to create designs. And, I, and if y'all interested in seeing a video on that, how to design with vinyl, to keep you from having to weed so much. I think a video like that could help people that's new. A lot of y'all already know the tips and tricks to doing that, but I'll probably end up doing a video on that anyway. Okay, so when it comes to comparing DTF to sublimation, DTF can go on any color shirt, any material shirt. Sublimation can only go onto cotton shirts. When it comes to DTF, I feel like it's a cross between sublimation and screen printing as far as you printing out the transfers and if you were making screen printed transfers you would use a adhesive powder that's similar to the DTF powder I don't know they could be the same thing but I know they are very similar but when it comes to the sublimation versus DTF I think I would choose the DTF because you can do a lot with DTF. You can print on pretty much any type of material like cotton poly blends, 100% polyester, dark colors. I mean, it don't even matter. You know, this video wasn't really supposed to get too deep into which one is the best. I was really just kind of wanting to tell you guys about sublimation and trying to help you decide if you should buy a sublimation printer, if it's worth buying and stuff like that. You know that's what this video was about so if y'all interested let me know i will do a dtf versus sublimation and a dtf versus screen printing and let you guys you know get more in depth on this conversation right here but that's where i'm gonna have to leave it at for today but as you guys see with this design right here you can see how bright it is i mean the colors are so bright on here. I mean, it's it's just super bright right here. And y'all know this. These are these are your girls' colors. So I will be rocking this shirt. But this is um, the colors are bright. So um, should you buy a DTF printer? It kind of depends. Now, when it comes to DTF printing, you do have to use your printer every single day. You cannot go a month without using your printer without usually having some issues with the ink clogging or drying up and causing you issues i mean there are ways that you can fix that problem but you don't want to get to that situation to where you have to be able to 
unclog your printer or fix your printer or whatever. And even if you use regular inks, it's not just the DTF inks. If you have a printer that's not a laser printer, you're, you're going to have clogging issues, some form of clogging issues. If you are not doing maintenance or regularly using your printers, you can have situations where the ink dries out and different things like that. But I feel the DTF is for someone that's going to be printing on a regular basis. So would I recommend the DTF printer to someone who is starting out in the t-shirt business? Yes and no. I feel like DTF is a process of a learning process. And I always like to recommend that people start out with the HTV because it's less mistakes are made with, with the HTV. The main things with the HTV is to make sure that you print the right designs, spell everything correctly, and weed all the parts that's not supposed to be in the design out. But when it comes to different methods like um, DTF and screen printing, you can make mistakes and you can like mess things up. Like even though I've been screen printing for several years, I still sometimes mess up. But when it comes to HTV, usually I don't mess the shirts up. Usually with HTV, if I'm gonna mess up, it's messed up because I printed the wrong thing out or something. And usually I catch those mistakes before I actually print onto the shirt. But as for like DTF, sometimes it just has issues and the printer don't print right. Or you may not have your film coming out flat so it could scrape it. I mean, it's just a whole bunch of different things when it comes to that, such as with screen printing, you may not have it lined up correctly. You know, it's just different issues with that. But my experience with DTF printing, I have really loved it. I really enjoyed it. I feel like it is a good addition to my business. I feel like it's something I do want to get a bigger DTF printer. I do want to be able to offer transfers eventually. And I do want to grow my DTF part of the business because I do feel like it is a good option with a lot of different things. Okay, like with sublimation, you're printing onto white or light color shirts. But with DTF, you can print on any color shirt. You can print on different things. You're not just restricted to t-shirts. Kind of like with sublimation, you can print on different substrates. That's basically what I want to talk to you guys about in this video. Um, if y'all want me to go more in depth into DTF, like showing you the steps, showing you everything that you need and different things like that, y'all leave comments below this video. Let me know and I will do my best to fulfill all of your requests to the best of my ability. But um, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're still watching and you have not subscribed, while you're still here, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you will be notified when I post future videos. And I appreciate you guys watching. And hopefully I'll see you in another video soon, maybe. But until then, be blessed.